What's up, Dragon Brood? Now, you know we're in Forgotten Realms, and one of the big things there is dungeon crawling because, well, it's Dungeons and Dragons, and that's what you do. You fight dragons in the dungeon. Actually, you don't. If you've ever played D&D, there's a million things you can do. But that aside, we do have a dungeon mechanic in this set, and we're going to build it, and we're going to play it. So, Venture. It's a thing that we've been looking at since, you know, previews, but people have really struggled on finding the version that works for them, or even finding one that's one consistent or two even remotely competitive so we're trying to fill that niche there and hopefully today's video will be able to take care of that now we're also playing some colors i don't necessarily think people thought was the combination to go with but it seems to work so we'll see what's up but like always we're going to probably make some changes as we go along but i think it's going to be a lot of fun and this is a totally unique thing here that you don't get to really do in any other set it plays different than every other mechanic the one downside i think to venture is just kind of what we're seeing with a lot of mechanics in the recent sets it's just that this is all we're gonna have right we don't get any more venture cards until maybe we come back and do D, &D again i don't know whether that's two summers from now or whatever and if we do do they even come back to the venture mechanic it's kind of the same thing we saw with mutate and ikoria and kicker and zendikar like we just don't get a lot to work with so you have to make the most of what you have and then kind of add in around the fringes from existing cards and see if you can make it work so all that being said let's go take a look at this venture deck so the adventure to get i say that venture but uh the process i'll say to get to this deck was kind of interesting because sort of started out in some different colors and then started experimenting with how to make it work in regular standard and then almost kind of reverse engineered our way into this so is this the best version i don't know but it at least is workable so we'll see uh, but starting at the top fly is one of the cards i think people are probably going to overlook the most when playing these lists but i think it plays two key roles now the first is the obvious that whenever you deal damage you get to venture into the dungeon which is awesome but it's also a matter of your creatures aren't necessarily great that do have the venture mechanic so if you can at least give it something to fly over you increase the odds that you're actually going to get those triggers and because you're getting something extra every time you hit it becomes even that much bigger of a deal we have yuan t malison this is just a cool one piece of art right just cobra person snake rogue like this is awesome but the card itself is actually pretty good because if you do get into a stalled board you can just attack with it by itself and still get a trigger every turn so it practically guarantees that if you want to venture into the dungeon you're going to be able to it is a very small creature so it is susceptible to all the removal but don't really mind that for what it is power word kill this is a highly efficient and inefficient kill spell at the same time efficient in the sense that it's an instant and it costs two and that's fantastic and it's only one black mana and the cost the downside is it doesn't hit angels or dragons which there's a lot of and there's even a few demons and one thing currently that makes devils however there will likely be devils in innistrad so i have no idea what that means for power word kill going forward but we're going to give it a try in this list then we're playing four triumphant adventurer this card did you know attack venture death touch first strike good banishing verse this is a really just a good quality all-around removal right now there's not a ton of multicolor things there's a few but not a lot and uh, this removes most of the problem cards that you don't have other ways to deal with cloister gargoyle this is one of the few that i'm just like i'm accepting that i have to play with this but i don't love that i have to play with this it, it is an 0-4, so it blocks up a bunch of stuff. Once you've gone into the dungeon, it's flying and becomes a 3-4, so that's cool. You, you get a freebie dungeon venture whenever it comes into play, and you can do the short dungeon if you just want to get to where it's flying faster. One of the things I will bring up, though, uh, as a word of caution, is if we take a look here at the Tomb of Annihilation, you actually can't take the Oubliette side. Like, sometimes it's worth it when you can just go Trapped Entry, Oubliette, cradle of the the death god right because you can get to that big four four or five five faster depending on what you have on the board the problem here though is if you choose oubliette you have to discard a card sacrifice a creature an artifact and a land now if you do have 
the card to discard, the creature to sacrifice, you maybe don't have an artifact, and then you get rid of a land. However, Cloister Gargoyle is an artifact. So you either have to get rid of this as your creature, so you don't have to get rid of an additional thing, or you have to choose a creature and then an artifact. So it's not, not uh, it doesn't really work to our favor very well, unfortunately. But it is what it is. So you got to be careful if you're going to go that route and you have a Cloister Gargoyle out. Nadar, Selfless Paladin. I like everything this card's doing. I just don't know if we should be playing four. I started out with four. Maybe we'll trim it back after we play a few games. But the card's good. It's efficient. 3-3 three, three for three. Very often going to be a 4-4. Four, four, and it has Vigilance. So yeah, nothing wrong with that. This card might even be playable in some night decks and some other things, even if you don't aren't, aren't uh, focused on the venture mechanic. Then we have Esserarek, the Archlich, or Archlich, I guess, however you decide to play it, say that. Uh, this comes into play if you haven't completed the Tomb Annihilation yet, then it goes back to your hand, you get a trigger. Uh, if you have, then it just stays in play, and then whenever it attacks, you make a 2-2 zombie. Unless your opponent sacrifices a creature. So, good all around for 3 mana, very solid. Uh, you can just keep it in your hand when you get late in the game if you have a bunch of mana, just to trigger dungeon, trigger dungeon, trigger dungeon. You know, and that's fine. If you never want to have it come into play, just don't ever complete the Tomb of Annihilation. Though, you may want to race through the Tomb of Annihilation very quickly, so you can get this into play if you already have one. Precipitous Drop. This is just a quality removal card. Enchanted Creature, minus two, minus two. If you've completed a dungeon, it gets minus five, minus five. And you venture. So, nothing wrong with this card at all. It's very good. Hama Pashar, Ruin Seeker. This is one of the reasons to actually even play blue, really, in this deck. It's very good. Uh, just getting double triggers on your abilities is very nice. You sometimes have to think through it a little bit to try to figure out, okay, do if I scry twice or if I make two tokens and do this thing or if I get double treasure, what can I do with the treasure? You know, you have to think about all that type of stuff. But if you plan out your lines, this could be very powerful. Borrowing of the Clan, Undur. This is kind of weird because we're sort of playing this just because we're playing the right colors. But sadly, uh, it doesn't, like, it's fine, right? It enters the battlefield. Venture, cool. But the other part doesn't really go off unless you've already completed a dungeon. So now, if you have, then it's cool because you're able to get, like, Nadar back out of the graveyard, then it comes into play and it triggers, and then, you know, you have a whole string of stuff all over again. So I don't know how many we need to be playing of this, but it's at least worth considering to talk about. And then, finally, as far as the spells go, we have Loth Spider Queen. Uh, we've talked about it on other videos. If you haven't watched my other videos, you probably should. Uh, Loth is very good. One of the best cards in the set. Just getting to draw cards or just double up your, your tokens is super, super, super fantastic. Uh, very little to complain about on this card. Lands, we're going with five planes, three islands, three swamp, four of each of the pathways, and I'm trying out one dungeon descent. As much as I gripe about this card, why it has so many damn drawbacks, I have no idea. But we're going to try it out in here, and if we draw it, see how good it is. As always, we're going to play some games at the end of the games. We do a follow-up, let you know what we would replace in this deck list. And then, we have a card spotlight for you. Uh, yeah, we'll keep this. We have all the mana we need. We have reasonable cards. We shall go with it. Uh, let's play... This first. Okay. wonder if we should just be playing to remove a bunch of our opponent's things here. I mean, like, if they attack here, do we just, like, block? I feel like the answer is yes. Especially since we can, like, do some trickery with, like, fly and this. Or, like, we could play this and remove something next turn with power word kill. Uh, we're going to be going against Mono Green. I think we're just going to go and try to get to the big 4-4. Four four. I think it's going to be the plan. And we're going to be the aggressor here, since we can remove stuff, give things flying. So, like, maybe? 
Let's see what's up. Oh, they're not doing what I thought they were going to do at all here. Well, them gaining life is like the opposite of what we want. Uh, we'll attack. I have cards to discard, so, uh, yeah, this one's gonna go. Now I have to decide what I think the opponent's actually gonna do. I mean, if they end up with four, five, six, seven mana next turn, what is the realistic scary thing they can do? Because really, I don't even know. I, I am... No idea right now. Mm, okay. I'm just going to gamble. If they play something big, I'll try to kill it. If I can't, we lose. That's kind of it. Because I can kill the Cobra here, but I'm like, they already have so much mana. Like, what's going to happen? White dragon. When in the battlefield, taps a creature. Okay. Interesting choice. Oh, I can't because it's a dragon. Gosh dang it. Forgot. Uh, yeah. Man, power word kill is not the card. That is not the card to have. Well, I guess we hold it now. If they're, if they're just playing dragons. I mean, there's not going to be much we can do about it. So, sure. What's the next level in our dungeon? Each player loses two life unless they sacrifice a creature, artifact, or land. Yeah, we just have to pass. Yeah, this is what I'm saying, though. Like, each of your creatures is so far worse than your opponent. Like... Your creatures are good when you're getting to like attack or do the extra thing. When you're when you're not, they're really bad. And they're gonna activate so they can play stuff off their library. Sure. Apparently it's another land. Scale the heights. You get to put two counters, and I guess we'll go ahead and kill that. If that's all you're doing for the turn. So now if they attack, we get two dungeon triggers. So that's not the worst thing. And now we're trying to race a dragon. Well, that's actually not bad. Actually, let's attack with both of these first. Unless they sacrifice a land, artifact a creature. Sure. Uh, I think we can give up an island here, actually, and be fine. Alright, we'll make our 4-4. Four, four. Or actually, 5-5, five, five, sorry. Play a land... I just realized I should have played that fly first. Um, yeah, all right. Because I could have got another dungeon trigger. I could have started another dungeon. Old Gnawbone. People have been... We were. I was talking about this on Twitter today. I have so many people wanting me to put Old Gnawbone into a deck, but like it just doesn't do anything. Sure. Just because we can. Opponent's going to be dead anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, we're on the draw, but sure. This isn't the worst. It, oh, they have one too? Gosh dang it. So we're in a pseudo mirror match here. 
They're going to play an Adar. We're going to play an Adar. Oh, no. They have Elite Spellbinder. Well, that's a little bit frustrating. Looks like we're about to lose that Nadar. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Here's the interesting thing, though. We will get multiple triggers where they won't because we have a fly. So, no point blocking, obviously. We would lose that fight. Uh, power word kill, huh? I could be interested in that. So what if we went here? And then... I feel like we could be totally the aggressor here. If I believe that... Uh, trying to think about how this game's going to go with us both trying to do dungeon things. So I'm also going to do this. Uh, sure, I guess I can stay. If we make a treasure token, that doesn't particularly help us other than letting us play Nadar. Possibly. Make a goblin we could block, but... Yeah, let's do that. Uh, I mean, I guess we go ahead and kill their adventurer with the power word kill. I sort of wanted to kill the flyer, but they probably have a counter. Oh, they don't. I was just sitting here waiting. I was like, yeah, okay, let's see it. All right, so we're in a very uh, interesting race situation here. I'm just going to Raven form it. Okay. Well, I guess it's a good thing I was planning on having a backup now, isn't it? Uh, I guess we put this on blue. Now, I'm going to attack with just this. So, we'll at least put the Spellbinder on some notice. Now if we get a land, we get in a dar, and then we're back in business. What are our next levels on this, by the way? Could put a plus one, plus one on something. Each opponent loses a life. That's going to go back to their hand. They get to make a goblin here, probably. So they could make a treasure. Okay, they could have made a treasure in Asarak a second time. Which wouldn't have been unreal. That's cute. Actually, I should have... Well, I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, Let's see. We can... Put a plus one, plus one on a thing. Each opponent loses two lives. Uh, you know what? Let's do this. Alright, let me get a card. That's not a bad thing. Let's go ahead and do this, since we've already completed a dungeon. And we are now the aggressors, so let's go here. I'm taking double Asareric here. Get a 5-5. Five five. Nope, they have another Raven form. Okay. And a Fracture. Sure. They're doing the thing. That's a Rarick to probably put up a counter. Yeah, all right. Makes sense. Uh, I'll block. I guess they're planning on sweeping the board or something. Nope, they just said oops. 
Oh, they're already giving us the GGs. Uh, I guess we'll discard this because we already have an Adar. Oh, you should like, unless we pay too much. Well, should have done that before the attack. Uh, sure. All right. I mean, yep. That's where it comes down. Draw a card. You make a 5-5. Five, five. Nope, you get to remove something. Sure. Um, yeah. Sure. All right, that's cool. Venture in a dungeon, and then Barwin's going to get to attack at some point and return something, which will probably just be the Spellbinder. Oh, the opponent just gave up. All right. This would have been good on a hand where we're getting to go first, but let's we'll take what we can get, I suppose. Oh, let's go with this. Okay, I thought it might have been like a power word kill or something there. You know, randomly, Nadar is a dragon, so he's actually protected from power word kill. Power word kill, I just don't think... It, like, I, I probably need to remove that in this deck. I don't think it's the removal card you want. As cool as it is, I just I just don't think it is what, what we want. Yeah, the Auntie Duder's pretty sweet. I get why you wouldn't want me to have that. Uh, let's go ahead and play one of these since they already know we have it. All right, let's see what they play here. I mean, they know we have removal. Shambling gas. That's annoying. Man, that makes us very sad, doesn't it? Well. Hmm. I guess we're going to use lose our adventure. This is not a good attack step for us, but... So be it. All right. We get a four four. Five five. Because we've completed a dungeon. Uh, if we're going to be the aggressors, I'm just going to keep on keeping on. I mean, now you can't really kill our duder. So we're probably going to make treasure. Play this. All right. So if they do have a sweeper here, we do have some post-combat setup, so that's not bad. Kaya is killing Nadar, which is great, because we have extra. Oh, that's also very good. Alright, so let's send you here. You here. Now, admittedly, I could have done this differently by playing 
Nadar giving that plus one, plus one. But I actually want to just get Loth down here. Uh, discard. We will discard and then Dar, I think. Well, this job is a bust. My children drench. Do what I All right. Demand. I think we managed to eke this one out. We'll see, though. Spellbinder. Well, we can pay for whatever it is that they take, so sure. We'll discard a land. Oh, actually, yeah. <laughs> uh, boy, I'm going to mulligan that, too. Jeez, that sucks. I mean, I really should have just mulliganed that five here, because, I mean, I guess the only thing we'd hope for is to get the Yonti, and then... I mean, we found white mana, that's cool. I mean, we may just have to use this to get rid of a Jaspera Sentinel next turn. As much as I want to actually do something productive. Well, I changes that too. Um, ah, boy, this sucks. Yep, they can get an attack for two. I mean, this is the good news, that they didn't do much else here. So we don't hate it. Unfortunately, they have access to a lot of mana next turn. And that's going to make us very sad. Uh, we already have blue. That's blue black. Let's discard this. All right, we're going to hope really hard that this doesn't die. <laughs> and I have a feeling it's going to. And then we're just going to be game over. Because we got nothing else after that. I mean, maybe the only thing that happens is we can get, like, an Esoreric or something. Yeah, that attacks. You get a card, bro. I mean, I can't afford to block it. Oh, that was not good. All right. I'm going to say sacrifice the land, blah, 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 sure. Oh, really? I don't think that's very good for us. Why would the opponent sacrifice the creature there when they had that much mana? Something bad's about to happen to us, right? I mean, because I can't imagine how that's a positive thing. Uh, can we draw another fly? That would be great. So we can put that on this demon. I guess he's a horror, to be honest. Hence the Tomb of Horrors. Oh, gosh. Yeah. 
Sure. That is not going to cut it. All right. GG's. We're dead. Keep it. And this is all the colors, so... Yeah. Alright, well, how many fight spells does the opponent have? Is basically what this is going to come down to. Oh, really? That's it? Not a second shambling swarm or anything? Or swarm shambler? Okay. Interesting, interesting. Well, the good news is, I think Power Word Kill works against most of the stuff in the green deck, at least. So this is one deck where it's actually good. Yeah, maybe they may just want to fight our Yonti or whatever. That becomes a different problem. Yep. Here comes a Blizzard Brawl. Not a surprise. Not a surprise. Okay, so... What do we want to do here? I kind of want to play a Yanti, take a hit for four, five, six, seven. Possibly more. Go to 13. Then the next turn we could fly, power word kill... But then we'd be dangerous trying to even get Loth down. Hmm. Don't know if we can do that. I think we're going to do this. Because at least this can chomp block, I guess. If they don't have another fight spell. If they do, we're dead anyway. If they have, like, multiple fight spells here. I mean, yeah. I guess if we'd have gone first, it's possible on this turn we could have had, like, the Yonti down and then respond to them doing something by killing a creature. But not a thing here. Alright, so are we just taking four? That'd be the good news. Nope, doesn't look like it. There's probably more here. Nope. Okay. Sixteen. I mean, for any of these plans to work, by the way, I was going to say, we need another land, that at least, for any of this to matter. So, let's... Oh, gosh, what do we do? Alright, let's play this on Hama. Or Hama, is probably how you pronounce that. Let's attack... See if the opponent blocks. I doubt they will. Yep. I don't think we can play the wild life loss game, though, unfortunately. I think our plan is probably going to reside here. And then next time, hopefully, we can make two goblins. I uh, don't need that land at the moment. And we don't need that land either. Okay. In the turn. So in theory, we should be able to keep four damage off of us at least. Uh, also can't use Power Word Kill against a Faceless Haven, which is bad. Okay, they're attacking with all the things. Sure, no blocks. Alright. So let's save just some damage. I don't think Lulz going to be enough next turn, but we're going to do what we can, you know? 
Well, we'll get Loth and two goblins, actually. So that's that's actually okay. Especially since the opponent attacked with the Sentinel. We're practically guaranteed to get... Oh, they had another troll. Never mind. That changes a lot of things. Ooh, but a Vanishing Verse is nice here, though. All right. I don't know how much that changes. Uh, that's pretty strong here, though, actually. Okay. Mostly because we get rid of the troll altogether. All right, they didn't block with the sentinel. That was the first thing we were checking. So actually, okay, so let's think about this. If we make two treasure here, then we can play Loth, make two spiders, which would still let us block block and still use the vanishing verse versus making two goblins and this and maybe chump blocking here and killing that. Okay, we're going to make the treasures. I don't know if it's totally more sound, but it feels good in my head. So we're going to go with it. You could have such power, but I will cull the weak. I mean, they might still just send everything at Lulz, but if they do, we get to block, block sentinels and then exile the troll. So that'd be sweet. Could also make your tree a 2-2, two, two, a 3-3, three, three, actually. No, 4-4, four, four, right? 1-2-3. And no, 1 to start it. So never mind, 3-3. Three, three. Okay. Let's see how they attack, actually. This could determine some things. Because they might think they're going to get through enough that they don't send enough to actually kill Loth. Oh, they're sending lots at Loth. Okay, that actually works out too. They just want it dead. Sure. So, all of it? And we get to kill these off. I'm kind of all right with this, really. <laughs> sure. I return to the abyss. My we will slay our enemies. Ooh. Okay. Let's do this. We don't lose a life, we gain a life. We can make the troll minus for a turn. Uh, opponents at 14, they would go to 12. We'd go from 12 to 14. We get to draw a card. We get two cards. Let's... Though we could negate the attack of multiple things here. So yeah, let's do that. And then we get our cards. Oh, that was so good. That was so good. Uh, yeah. So we get to play this. Oh my gosh, we're going to get so many triggers next turn if this stuff lives. Uh, Werewolf Pack Leader. Oh, so that has to attack to get the bonus, so we're not too worried about that. Oh, this this is going to be great if we can pull this off. Yep, I get to counter. I get to counter. We don't mind at all. Though I think here, I'm going to go ahead and exile the troll right now while we have the opportunity to. Because we're going to get a lot of triggers off of our creatures next turn and I want to be able to spend the mana on whatever it is we draw or you know if there's multiple things we want to do
All right. Exile this duder. Our turn. Oh, that's good too. The deck's trying so hard. We need to get something that lets us draw cards here, though, because I want one more mana so we can do both of these. Oh, the opponent gave up. We're going to have a bunch of triggers. Woo! We were going to hit and get one, two, three triggers, right, from the flies. And then we were going to then have all of those doubles. So we were going to get six. Then the Yanti also deals a damage, so we venture. So we get two. So we were gonna get eight venture triggers on that attack step. Three from the flies, one from Yanti, and all doubled. So we'd have been able to do all kinds of things. Like that would that was about to be awesome. We could have even done the same one where we scry, then make the treasure. So we could have got Loth, or we could have done the other thing where we make the the goblins and that would have been cool and then we would have still had two more things we got to do so we would have actually finished another dungeon actually yeah that would have been wild Woo. okay so i have to admit this deck actually played better than i thought it was going to i thought it might be on the lower part of like barely hitting that 40 percent range but it actually was okay i think the toughest part about it was having to know what the dungeons were. So you have to get familiar with the dungeons to be able to make your decisions quicker and understand like what you're aiming for. Like how many triggers do you need that turn to get to the thing you want, right? Can you stop an opponent's creature? Can you come over the top, right? That understanding those things really changes how you would go about um, playing each turn. So that's, that's kind of the biggest thing here. My other issue is I'm not really sure I'm big on power word kill. I think there's enough dragons floating around and even occasionally enough uh, cleric or angel decks that put you in situations where you need to be able to kill a creature and you can't I'm likely to move those to uh, what is it precipitous drops and probably more vanishing bursts so you may see those changes in the final list and I may even cut a borrow in for something else uh, I not that it's a bad card I just think it'd be a little better for us to have something more efficient and regular but outside of that I actually thought this was pretty fun and I was thinking I might just play it for the video, but I'm actually might come back to this and play it a little bit more. I actually really enjoyed it. Now for today's card spotlight, we're going to talk about an oldie, but a weirdie, I guess weirdy weirdo. I don't know how you would uh, go about that. But anyway, we're going to talk about Elven Riders, mostly because this is the stuff we had to deal with back in the day when people right now talk about cards not being as good or flavor fails or whatever. Like, this one doesn't even make sense. It's a really expensive, what, like, 3-3? And then it can't be blocked except by walls and creatures with flying, and I don't even understand why, because it's just elves on wolfback. Is wolfback a term? But, like, it's it, nothing about this card makes sense. And even if you look at the art, all the elves look like the dude from V for Vendetta for some unknown reason, with, like, I don't know, if I remember right, they have, like, these weird little, not Shriner caps, but, like, Hunter's caps. I don't know what's going on. Nothing about this card is great, but it's what we had back in the day. And even when you're playing an elf deck, not many people played this. So, you're not really missing much. Just a weird thing that existed once upon a time in Magic. Figured I'd tell you about it. Don't forget, if you want today's deck list, it will be down in the description below. Along with links for all of our other stuff. So, if you want to come check me out on Facebook Gaming or on Twitch, that'll be a chance for you to get something featured. Or maybe even get to call what we're going to have here on the YouTube channel. And, don't forget, we have a Discord with over 500 members of the Brood that are there now. Having a good old time. So you ought to come by and join and be part of the festivities. Also, while I have a moment, I'd like to ask, how do y'all feel about me having Patreon? I have one for my podcast, but I don't have one for myself. And I've had multiple people ask me, should I start a Patreon? I don't know. Y'all tell me. Let me know down in the comments below. Uh, also, while you're there, don't forget to hit the like button, the subscribe button, the notification bell. Because that's helping the channel so much. And I mean that seriously. A couple of video goes, I even videos ago, I even showed you the notes I got from YouTube about it. So y'all keep it up. It's working. But that's all I have for you for now. We'll see you next time.